See the news. <laughs> Our redemption is near. <laughs> Here's a message to my black people. We are royalty and we ain't equal. Remember Sabbath day to keep it holy. Fall in laws, that's commandments, daddy put before thee. You can never go wrong as you follow him. The other nation spit and we are Jim. It's all been designed since beginning the time. He can see that you're hurting you, the apple of his eye. Apple of his eye. There's nothing that we desire that he won't give. You got to pray in sincerity according to his will. Get off the corners, get up off the blocks. Black sisters be queens and not thoughts. Throw out everything that your mama taught. Religion was a hoe, so come up out of her. We said we hate the Bible because the white man had made it. To keep our mind back in slavery, and that's why it's tainted. That's why it's tainted. Did you know the prophet in Bible was black? Not speaking my opinion, just stating facts. Y'all sure died on the tree, he was black. Y'all opened the Red Sea for Moses, he was black. Abraham, Jacob, no, they was black. So when you wake up in the morning and you feel attacked, just look in the mirror, know he got your back. He would never leave for seconds, cause he know the enemy break it, cause I. Yahweh, Yahweh, Shadow, Father. Yahweh, Yahweh, Shadow, Father. Yahweh, Yahweh, Shadow, Shalom Israel, giving honor and praise to the Most High God for the reading and the understanding of his word and family, family, family. Woo! I want to wish every king, every queen, every prince, and every princess, I want to wish you a wonderful, magnificent Sabbath. And once again, thank you for bringing this in with your brother this week and family. Y'all already know. It's been a minute since I said that. Two weeks, actually, because it took two weeks to calm down after that gathering, boy. <laughs> oh, man, 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 the gathering is over, and y'all already know how I feel about these gatherings, boy. I love them. I love them. And this one was the biggest one yet. It was incredible. It took me two weeks to get over. I'm still on a high. I'm still on a gathering high. I don't give a damn what you say. And... 
I want to thank each and every last one of you that made the gathering possible. Thank you so much for your donations. It was because of your up. Uh, it was because of your donations, and of course, the will of the Most High that allowed that to happen. So thank you so much. Thank you for all of your support. I'm ready to do it again. Now, family, ah, we got to talk. We got to talk. We got to talk. Yes, we do. So now let's talk. Let's seriously, let's have a discussion. Let's have a conversation. I'm sick and tired of Christianity. Tired of them. Sick of them. And before we really get into Christianity, before we get into that, there's just some things I'm still reeling off of the gathering. I'm sorry. I got to show y'all something. Can I show y'all something real quick? Can y'all see this? Yeah. Hold on. What about this one right here? Time out. Got to do this one right here. Y'all see that? Yeah. Okay. And up, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm showing off right now. Yes, indeed. Do y'all remember when I was talking about now, ladies? Y'all remember that? Yeah. You see, this is how my family does for me. You see, thank you. I love y'all so much. <laughs> And just to let y'all know, first and foremost, remember when I was talking about now, ladies, that one day? And that's right. My family, that's right. My family, they bought me some now, ladies, to the gathering, baby. And just to let y'all know, I'm going to keep one pack. But all the all other packs are done. I'm tearing them up. I'm keeping one pack for the memorial sake. <laughs> but other than that, thank you so, so much. Now, family, let's get into this. I just want to be honest. I'm sick and tired of Christians. Mm -hmm. Please forgive that, that scraping, that's tea. It's my allergy season. Y'all know how that goes. But I'm sick and tired of the Christians. I had enough. I've had enough of their lies. I've had enough of their lies and their BS. We are too close to the end of existence in this world as we know it to be playing games. Like I told y'all before, I'm not doing any more of those idiotic lessons. I'm not doing any more of those milk-based lessons, but... There are times when we have to review the rudimentary and there isn't anything wrong with that. And that's what we're going to do this week and probably next week, too. What am I going to do? What are we going to do this week? We are going to bring out the lies that Christians love telling. We're going to bring it out. And then we're going to see whether or not if Christianity is a sin. Mm. What we're going to do is see whether or not if Christianity is a sin. So, family, please open your Bibles to the 1611 King James Version Bible with the Apocrypha. The Apocrypha are the hidden books of the Bible that was removed by the Protestant Church. They are a part of the original 1611 King James Version Bible. Okay? And I say with the Apocrypha because they changed it. The Protestant Church took out certain books. But that's not the Bible we read from. We read from the original one, the original scripts. We're going to go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 21. Y'all know I don't play around when we start with that. That's what the type of lesson is going to be tonight. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 21. And here it is. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Hold on to the things that's good. All of the word is good. All of it, every last bit of it. So what we're going to do, here's the premise. We are going to mention a lie that Christians tell. And then we're going to see if the Bible supports their lie. Okay? Very simple. Very, very simple. A very, very easy thing to follow. But we have to do this for the sake of our people. Blacks, Hispanic, and Native American people known as the Israelites. Family, now I want you to go. As a matter of fact, before we do that, I want to show you a video. I want to show you this video because, you know what? No explanation. What do you find confusing about Jesus? He didn't tell us how he got resurrected. He's very much a figure of like acceptance, but I think that sometimes in Christianity, there's like a lack of acceptance. You got God. You got Jesus, you got the Holy Ghost. It's a lot. It's fine. For monotheism, it feels kind of polytheistic sometimes, you know? I personally don't find anything confusing. I feel like other people just don't know stuff, so I guess that's why it'd be confusing. I don't understand how the people wanted him to be executed. His love is, is one of the most mind-boggling things I've ever come across because it's, it's yeah, I mean, it's out of this world. If you claim your religion is Christianity, you, you claim absolute confusion. 
For instance, different ideologies, different beliefs, different doctrines. All of these people and more claim their religion is Christianity. Catholics, Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses, Methodists, Unitarians, Trinitarians. And the list goes on and on and on. Look at how many different sets of this so-called religion of Christianity is. It's absolute nothing but confusion. There's only one faith. But all of y'all have different belief systems and different doctrines. That means not all of you are in the Apostles' Doctrine. There's only one true church. You are in Babylon. Christianity is not even in the scriptures. No religion called Christianity is in there. Reevaluate your salvation. I'm here now to debunk uh, Christianity in less than a minute. And to do so, I'll need my first witness, Jesus of Nazareth. Okay, so Jesus teaches in the Gospel of John that the only true God is the Father. Who's that? The only true God is the Father. For those at the back, the only true God is the Father. If the only true God is the Father, then Jesus cannot be God. If Jesus is God, then means he's lying. If he's lying, it means he isn't God. Therefore, if Jesus says the Father is the only true God, he isn't God. If he's lying about the Father being the only true God, he isn't God. Therefore, Jesus debunks Christianity in less than a minute. Christians, you're welcome. Okay. See, I told you, no explanation needed, was it? Nope. Because they did it right there for you. It's so simple to understand. The question being asked, why in the world? Why? Why? Why all the confusion? Why all of the confusion over Christianity if God is so simple? Family, please go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and go down to verse 33. Please, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, go down to verse 33. Let's see what it says. For God is not, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. All churches of the saints. All churches of the saints. That's the one thing that people don't get about that. You have the churches of the unrighteous, which is called the Sunday church, which is called Christianity. There's not one Christian that participates in Christianity that is a saint. Not one. Christianity opposes the Bible. I'm going to say that again. Christianity opposes the Bible. A real Christian is an Israelite, a black, Hispanic or Native American person that is following the laws, statutes and commandments that the God of Israel gave us that last forever. Yahweh Shai, who the world, first and foremost, let me say this here. Let's make sure we get this here straight. Jesus is a term that is created by the world. OK, when you mention Yahweh Shai, that is the correct mention of his name, the correct one of coming from God. OK, now let's go back. I want to read this one more time. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints, the saints are the Israelites, not the blacks, Hispanics or Native Americans that's following Christianity or any other religion. Only the ones that are Israelites keeping the commandments that God gave us in the holy book known as the Bible. OK, simple. That was that. So now what is the first lie that we're going to talk about here? What's the first one? That first lie that everybody loves to say in Christianity. God loves everybody. <laughs> Does he? Does God love everybody? Oh, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go right into the scriptures and see if that's what the Bible says. So, family, please, I want you to go to the book of Ecclesiasticus. We're going to start off with the Apocrypha, just so that you can see that those books correlate with the rest of the Bible as well. So that you can see it's all a part of the same thing. It is the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 12 and verse 6. The book of Ecclesiasticus, the book of Sirach. 
Here it is. For the most high hateth sinners. For the most high hateth sinners. Okay. And will repay vengeance unto the ungodly and keepeth them against the mighty day of their punishment. So there it is. The most high said, first and foremost, I hate sinners. I hate sinners. Don't Christians go around saying, but God loves the sinner, but hates the sin. The Bible says that God hates sinners. That's one lie right there. Debunked. God won, Christian zero. That was that. So now let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, excuse me, uh, Ezekiel. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel. So we're going to go to the Old Testament now. The book of Ezekiel, let's go down to uh, chapter 18, go down to verse 20. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 20. Watch this. Watch this, family. Watch. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Now, doesn't Christianity says all you have to do is believe in Jesus and everything's going to be OK? All you have to do is confess your faults to Jesus Christ and everything's going to be OK. Let me say this again. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. Stop. In Christianity, don't they say that the children bear the iniquity of the parents? Mm -mm -mm. So now you have two categories here. You have all of the curses. You have all of the curses that we are under. That is what we have inherited from our forefathers and foremothers. Not their individual sin. The curses as far as breaking the law. Breaking God's law as a whole, as a people, not their individual sin. We do not take on their sin because they must stand in front of the father as an individual. So do you. That's another lie debunked that Christianity loves to say. But let's continue, though. I want to continue this here. Verse 21. But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he have committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right. He shall surely live. He shall not die. So now, does the Christian say or not say, God did away with the commandments. The commandments are no more. <laughs> mm. We are no longer under the law. That's not what this says. That is not what this says. The Bible says we are still under the law forever. But that was just there, though. So as we see, the Bible hates sinners and it promises death for the sinner. So now what we're going to do, we're going to jump over to John chapter 8 and verse 24. Let's go there. Now, the New Testament, John chapter 8 and verse 24. We're going to make sure that all of these correlate because the Bible tells us how we have to read the Bible. Precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. And that's what we're going to do. John chapter 8 verse 24. This is coming out of the mouth of Yahawashai, who the world calls Jesus, out of his mouth himself. It says, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. I'm going to read that again. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. So the Redeemer, the one that is coming to save Israel, said that we will die in our sins. But, but, watch this. For if ye believe not that I am he, if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Now that poses a problem now, doesn't it? In Christianity. That poses a problem. You know what problem that poses? You know what problem that causes? They believe in white Jesus. <laughs> they believe that Jesus was white and European. Then you are, you'll get some of them that try to be fancy. Like, no, you know, he wasn't a European. He was an Arab. He was neither of the two. He was a Negro. Just like me. Just like you, if you're a Negro. Yahawashai was a Negro. He was a Negroid. He wasn't a Mongoloid. 
or a Caucasoid. He was a Negroid. Hands down, bottom line. So that causes the problem to the Christian now, doesn't it? Because Yahweh Shai said, if you don't believe on him, if you don't believe that he is Negro, you don't get the kingdom. <laughs> God is cold. That's why when all them Edomites, when that sky crack, <laughs> woo, they got, oh my Lord, Lord, Lord. Can y'all understand the mental, the mental scarring is going to cause Esau when that sky crack, they're going to see God is black, the angels are black, and Yahweh is black, and the children of Israel are black too. Mm-mm-mm. Mm -mm -mm. And they know it and they know it and they know it's coming and they know that we are getting ready to take over this world. They know what the Bible says. They know what it says. And just so that you don't think I'm sitting here running my mouth. You stinking fucking niggers think you're going to fucking take over the world. You guys can't even fucking handle taking care of Chicago, Baltimore or fucking St. Louis. How the fuck are you going to take over the world? You guys are so fucking ignorant. Why don't you go loot something? Huh? Why don't you go steal something? Shut your fucking rubber lips, you black piece of shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For all you Christians, that's your brother. That's your brother in Christian brotherhood. Uh-huh, go ahead. Go ahead and align yourselves with them niggas. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Christianity said that that's their brother's. Christianity says that them niggas are equal when the Bible says we're not equal. So if you want a good dose of that, watch the gathering from two weeks ago. OK, so now that they have that right, we all have that. So. We have to get some evidence of what I just said. Would we have to go right back to the Apocrypha family? Please go to the book of the wisdom of Solomon. Let's go to the book of the wisdom of Solomon. Let's go down to chapter seven. Chapter seven, the wisdom of Solomon, chapter seven, family. Let's go ahead. Let's go to, uh, I'm, I'm, as a matter of fact, I'm going to start at verse one. Let's read it from there. Because now we have to start getting some stuff here in regards to Yahweh Shai, right? As a matter of fact, you know what? You know what? Let's go to first Maccabees instead. I want to go there first. I got something I want to prove. Something just came up to me. Go to 1 Maccabees chapter 3. Go to 1 Maccabees chapter 3. Go down to verse 48, please. Let's talk about some of this stuff here. Let's talk about that white Jesus thing. I want to show y'all that our prophets already knew that they were going to start painting Jesus white. Watch. 1 Maccabees chapter 3 and verse 48. And laid open the book of the law. That's the Bible. Wherein the heathen... That's anybody outside of the nation of Israel, black, Hispanic and Native American people. Anybody outside of that is considered a heathen. Had sought to paint the likeness of their images. You see that? It says that they will paint over the images of the true prophets, the true king of kings, the true Lord of lords. They were going to get into our book. And paint over it. So that tells you that our original book had illustrations. <laughs> the original books had illustrations. I'm going to say it again. The original books had illustrations. Where can you find them at now? Russia. As a matter of fact, you can find them all over line right now because Vladimir Putin's starting to put everything out. <laughs> the Most High's will will be done. All right. So now that was that. That's why I took that detour. So now, now I want to go to where are we going now? Let's let's stay on Yahweh Shai for a second. Let's freestyle this. Let's stay on Yahweh Shai. Go to uh, because I, I really want to stress this here with Yahweh Shai. Go go to our uh, second. Go, go 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 to Philippians chapter two. Go to Philippians chapter two. Go down to verse 16, please. Philippians chapter 2, verse 16. Watch, man, watch this. Watch this. I, I want to read this. Second, uh, excuse me, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 16. Holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Y'all see that? I want to make sure that y'all see that. 
I want to make sure that y'all see this here. I'm going to read this one more time and then we're going to go backwards. Watch this. Holding forth the word of life. Word of life. That I may rejoice in the day of Christ. A day that we're going to be happy when we see that big black man in the sky. That I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. That I was not calling him a white boy. That I knew that the son of God was a Negro. He was a black man from the tribe of Judah. So now let's back up. Go to verse five, same chapter. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, no, 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 no. Yeah, stay right here, stay right here. Second, uh, well, I keep doing that. Philippians chapter two, verse five, watch this. Let this mind, let this mind, in other words, it's telling you think. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men, in the likeness of men, in the likeness of men. Why am I reading this here? But let me continue. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. So now, why did I read that? What is the next lie that we're going to talk about? Don't these Christians say that Christ came of a virgin birth, that Mary did not have sex with Joseph to have Yahweh Shai? What did we just read? He came as a man. As a man. Now, in order to be a man on this earth, you have to be created, right? But Christianity says that there was this heavenly angel that came down from heaven and bestowed life bestowed life in Mary's stomach. That is not what the Bible says. As a matter of fact, I'm going to prove to you with the scriptures that Jesus came from Mary and Joseph bumping them uglies. That's right. He beat them guts up and had Yahweh shy. I'm going to prove it. So now we got to go to the wisdom of Solomon. That's where we were going first. The wisdom of Solomon, chapter seven, go down to verse five. No, as a matter of fact, no, 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 no. I want to start at verse one. I want to make sure contextually everybody understands what this says. The wisdom of Solomon, chapter seven, verse one. Watch. I myself also am a mortal man, just like we read in Philippians, right? Okay. Like to all and the offspring of him that was made first of the earth. The offspring of him that was made first of the earth. The offspring of him that was made first of the earth. That's Adam. I need you to pay attention to the term offspring. Don't forget offspring. And in my mother's womb was fashioned to be flesh in the time of 10 months. 10 months, not nine, 10. Being compacted in blood of the seed of man. Being compacted in blood in the seed of man. First and foremost, being compacted in blood, meaning being in a woman's stomach from the seed of a man when he bust a nut inside of her vagina and gave her a child that is now forming inside of her stomach. Being compacted in blood of the seed of man and the pleasure that came with sleep. And when I was born, I drew in the common air and fell upon the earth. So when I was born, the doctor slapped or whatever. The baby started breathing and started crying. And it fell on the earth, meaning that it came out of his mother's vagina, which is of like nature. That is the natural thing to do. And the first voice which I uttered was crying as all others do. Like I mentioned, when the baby comes out, it gets the oxygen and begins to cry. And when I was born, I drew in the common air. Well, I just read that. Sorry, it should be verse four. I was nursed in swaddling clothes and that with cares. For there is no king. For there is no king that had any other beginning of birth. For there is no king that had any other beginning of birth. For all men have one entrance into life and 
the like going out. Okay. Mm-hmm. No man. No man. No man. No man. Not one. Not one. This is biblical. So now, family, let's now go to the book of Timothy, chapter 6. 1 Timothy, chapter 6. Let's go down to verse 5. 1 Timothy, chapter 6, verse 5. Watch this. Perverse disputings of the men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. Do you guys see that right there? You see that? Don't be believing no nonsense. Don't be believing. Do not be believing no nonsense. Let's read it again. Perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself. Do not be arguing with no stupid, idiot, dumb ass Christian about the virgin birth, because the Bible says every last person that has entered into this world came from semen. That means that Joseph had Mary knocked up. And she had their son called Jesus, Yahawashai. That's what the Bible says. We're going to continue to prove that point. So now, family, I want you to go right here. I want you to go to the uh, book of Revelation, chapter 22 and verse 16. We're going to go to the last book of the Bible. You cannot get any more New Testament than Revelation, chapter 22 and verse 16. And we are going to see what comes out of Jesus slash Yahawashai's mouth. Watch this. This is red writing. This is Jesus. I, Jesus, he even mentions his name. He even mentions his name. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. I'm the offspring of David. Did we not just read about the offspring? Then I tell you how to remember offspring, right? So now we're going to get the definition of offspring. What is the definition of offspring? What is the definition of offspring? Let's see if Yahweh Shai knew what he was talking about. What is the definition of offspring? A person's child or children. A person's child or children. Wow. Wow. Genetics. <laughs> Jesus said out his own mouth. He said it out of his own mouth. <laughs> now, let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 1. <laughs> the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 1. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> the Christian is so stupid. They're so dumb. Matthew, chapter 1, verse 1. The book of the generations of Jesus. The book of the generations of Jesus Christ. The son of David. There it is again. <laughs> the offspring of David. The son of Abraham, the offspring of Abraham, the generations of Jesus, meaning the gene pool of Jesus, all the way from Adam, all the way down to Joseph. If you read Matthew 1, the entire chapter is about the generations, the ball sack to ball sack, introduction of the world of Jesus Christ. Yahweh Shai. Stupid, idiot, dumb ass Christian. They don't even know that. Can I ask y'all a serious question for real? How is it that the Christian has the book in their hand? They have all the answers to the, to the book and they still get the damn thing wrong. How is that possible? You know why? The Most High never opened up their spirit to understand. What did the Most High say? He said, what? Wisdom comes from what? Keeping the commandments. The beginning of understanding is wisdom. And you got to keep the commandments in order to get that. That's what the book says. Not me, not my opinion. That's what the book says. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. And to fear the Lord, we have to do what he tells us to do, which is keep his commandments. And as a matter of fact, stay right there. Go, go, go. As a matter of fact, go to our Revelation chapter 22 and verse 14, because we just read verse 16, right? Read verse 14. Let's see what it says. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 14. So just two scriptures up. Blessed are they that do his commandments, 
that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Bottom line, if you don't keep the commandments, you're going to burn. That's just the bottom line. I'm not speaking my own opinion. I'm speaking what the Bible just said. Not my opinion, what the Bible said. Now, that was that. So we all know that Yahweh Shai came from sex. According to the Bible. Very easy to understand, right? So why don't these pastors talk about this stuff? We're going to talk about them next week. We're going to talk about them next week. So now let's talk about one of the things that they love doing so much. One of those big, big topics all throughout Christianity. The one that has kept men away from the church. Will a man rob God? Will a man rob God? There is no pastor on this planet that has not uttered those words and received compensation. Well, like I said, we're not going to get into them deep this week. We're going to do that next week. But family, first things first, tithing. Why do they lie about tithing? First and foremost, I'm going to make this very easy. Tithing has nothing to do with money, and I'm going to prove it has zero percent to do with money so what is the lie that christianity says that you have to give 10 percent of your earnings as in today so in other words when you make whatever you make you got to give them 10 percent of that not off the net but off of the gross <laughs> they even have it down to where they're like yeah we don't want your taxes that is being unfairly taken from you that is not going to affect us give us our money so now what we're going to find out is if the Bible actually condones these pastors ways of getting your hard earned money for your compensation for your work. Let's see. Family, please go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14. What I'm about to show you is exactly what tithes are according to the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 22, family. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 22. Are y'all ready? Here it is. Thou shalt truly tithe. Y'all see that word right there, right? So we know this is talking about tithing. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed that the field bringeth forth year by year. The tithe, st starting over this, but th is a seed. Those are your crops, not money, crops, crops. Let's continue. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God. You're supposed to take those crops and eat it before the most high so he can watch you eat it. In the place which he shall choose to place his name there. That's Jerusalem. The tithe of thy corn of thy wine and of thine oil and the firstlings of thy herds and of thy flocks that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. Wow, to fear the Lord thy God always. To fear him, to fear the Lord is the beginning of understanding. And right now that understanding is that tithes was never money. Never. Never. And I'm going to continue to prove that. Let's continue reading. Let's go right here to verse 24. And if the way be too long for thee so that thou art not able to carry it or if he place, should me, or if the place be too far from thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there. Again, that's Jerusalem. When the Lord thy God have blessed thee, then shall thou turn it into money and bind up the money in thine hand and shall go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after, for oxen, or for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drink, or for whatsoever thy soul desireth. And thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God, and thou shalt rejoice, thou and thine household. So the money part. If your 
times were too much for you to carry, what you do, you sell it, you get the money, go to Jerusalem and all the things that you were going to buy in the land which you were, you buy in Jerusalem and take it to the Levites and take it to the Levites and take it to the Levites. That is tithing family, not money. It has nothing to do with your job. These Christian passes, they have gotten over on you. They have gotten over on me. They have gotten over on all of us. They are liars, murderers, thieves, cheats. They are going to burn. They're going to burn. Now, as we know, doesn't the Most High say that all liars, all liars are going to be thrown into the lake of fire, right? So if the Christians are saying these things right here, if they're saying the things that we just brought out in their lies, does that make them liars? The answer is yes. Being in Christianity is a sin. Being in Christianity is a sin because they have to lie to keep up with their religion. We don't have a religion. We have instructions. God gave us instructions based on our culture. We never had a religion and we will never have a religion. God said, either you do what I tell you to do, or I'm going to kill you. That's pretty cut and dry. All the things that God tells us to do, the Christian opposes. And we're going to continue this. What's another lie that Christians say? That all people can be saved. Family, let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 17. And let's see if that's the truth. The book of Isaiah chapter 45 verse 17 family. And here it is. But Israel, but Israel, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. How simple is this? The entire world's going to be saved? No. Israel. Israel. Let's get the precept. Go to the book of Joel, chapter 2 and verse 27. The book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord your God. And none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Precept. God said I only have my chosen people. My Israelites. That was Old Testament. Both of those Old Testament. Now let's go to the book of Romans. This is New Testament chapter 11. Go down to verse 25, please. The book of Romans chapter 11, verse 25. Watch this. Very simple. For I would not, for I would not, brethren, for I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. So he's saying, look, look, my nigga, yo, I can't have you thinking stupid, man. Lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, unless you are leaning on your own understanding, which is what the father told us that we'd never better do. Do not lean on your own understandings. That blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. The Gentiles, they got to catch it. And who is blind? Israel. Why? Because the ox and the ass don't know their master. Verse 26. And so all Israel shall be saved. This is New Testament, baby. This is New Testament, sweetheart. This is New Testament, darling. This is New Testament, brother. New Testament. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. Confirmed it from Isaiah chapter 45, verse 17, as it is written. Why does the Christian say that all people can be saved? Because they're liars. As it is written. 
There shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob for this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. You can't be a sinner. <laughs> you can't be a sinner. Which means you can't be in Christianity. You can't be in Islam. You cannot be in Buddha. You can't be in any of these religions. God gave his children one thing, instructions, and said, either you keep my instructions, you keep my commandments, my laws, and my statutes, or you're gonna die. Keep playing with Christianity if you want to. Those people are going to die, all of them. First and foremost, what's another lie that they tell? The lie that they tell is one of the biggest. They celebrate their high holy day on Sunday. Sunday, it is sun worship of the pagan god Ra that was put in place by the Emperor Constantine. Yep, sure was. That's right here in the book too. The very religion that the Bible tells them not to worship, they worship. <laughs> The very religion that the Bible tells them not to worship. The traditions of men that comes from Egypt, that sun worship. The Most High told them, don't worship it. And yet, those stupid ass Christians are right back in Egypt, worshiping the sun god Ra. Right back to it. Do y'all remember when our ancestors, when they came out of Egypt, they were saying, let's go back? They still continue to do that, family. Still. Still doing it. All them niggas. On them churches on Sunday. Worshipping the sun god, Ra. How do we know that? Because from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown is the beginning of the Sabbath. Friday sundown, the beginning Saturday sundown, the end. <laughs> the Christians are liars. And they're gonna die. All of them. That's a big number. Just think about all the churches that you know on Sunday that's gonna be in there worshiping. And if the Most High came back, if he sent Yahweh Shai back and the angels and cracked that sky on a Sunday, while well, all of them, I truly believe that's when it will be. That's when all the sin is happening. They do it every week. They send all that sinful smoke right up to the most high every Sunday and Wednesday. <laughs> That's what it is. All I did was read the Bible. I read the scriptures. You Christians, y'all lying ass niggas, boy. All y'all are going to die. Every last one of you. There should be no such thing as a black, Hispanic or Native American that is in Christianity, Catholicism or any other stupid ass religion. You shouldn't be. You're going to die. You're going to die. And good riddance. Good riddance. If you are stupid enough to actually follow in a religion where you're holding the book and it tells you don't follow those things. If you're holding the book that gives you all the answers and you choose not to do it, you deserve to die. You are a stupid ass. Absolutely stupid. To hold the answers and still get it wrong. How stupid are you really? Idiot. Dumbass Christian. <laughs>